welcome back. Before we start today's topic, I have a disclaimer for you. This might be my most serious video I've ever made. How serious? I wrote a script. I know it's just an outline with the inserted quotes, but you get the idea. And now for the two people who stayed here. What I have to say is that I'm Hungarian and our country successfully re-elected our garbage um, government once again and it's been attacking uh, LGBTQ plus people for quite some time. So I feel like it's my responsibility to speak against them the only way I can. Back in April I made a picture of the most famous Hungarian poet ever but as a genderqueer person. And I decided that if they win the election, then I'm going to make it into a series and I'm going to create more pictures with Hungarian historical characters and uh, Hungarian works of art. But I'm also going to add some sort of LGBTQ theme to these pictures. And this is how we arrive to the topic of today's video. My second picture of the collection is going to feature another Hungarian poet, called Odi Endre, or Endre Odi because the Hungarians switch the first and the last name like Japanese people, but I'm going to call him Odi Endre, the way Hungarians call him. Odi was quite possibly the most famous Hungarian poet of the 20th century, like he's one of the most discussed people of middle school literature class. What you have to know about him is that he was a really controversial figure, or at least when he lived and then he became a classic, and uh, actually him being a classic is a pretty ironic thing. You're going to understand that in a moment. Once I heard this quote that Adi wrote three kinds of poems. For one kind of them he was accused of being a pervert. For the second he was accused of being a blasphemous twisted-minded sadistic person, and for the third kind he was accused of being a national traitor. He lived a great part of his life in Paris, and he always expressed that how he loved the West, how developed it was compared to Hungary. Once he described uh, his home country in a poem as a wide landscape overgrown with weeds and without any flowers. I feel like that says a lot. He's always been a person of progress, and then when he came back to Hungary, he also continued to bring new ideas and bring modernity to his home country. And of course, many of them hated for this, especially the conservatives, since he was uh, writing about uh, romance and death and uh, the issues of Hungary and the Hungarian people like no one else before. And partially that is why he became so popular. For many years he was a lover of a woman with a really easily pronounceable Hungarian name, Diosine Brül Adela, but in his poems he called her Leda. So she was the person who took him to Paris. And uh, from what I understand, they had a really toxic relationship. Like, you know, these uh, they love each other, but they actually hate each other kind of situation. You get this. And uh, literature history describes this as a really passionate but uh, self-destroying. Um, so take that uh, the way you want. So this picture is inspired by two of his poems about Leda and their relationship. And I'm going to get into that after we address the elephant in the room. So on this picture I decided to depict Adi as a trans man. And uh, what you have to understand is that he was not a trans man in real life. My idea behind this series is that I'm going to take well-known Hungarian people and stories but not make these the picture's primary goal. So I'm just taking this creative liberty where I create a picture of Adi where he happens to be a trans man. And I know that many people are going to find this tasteless and call it a queerwashing or something, but this is really not my intention. What I'm doing is I'm depicting this person this way who is going to represent my chosen subject matter. Also, this is why giving him breasts is just an artistic choice, just to make the picture more readable. And if somebody doesn't like that, I can totally understand. But I felt the need to describe this whole situation so people can understand it properly. And I really have to emphasize that this is not meant to be offensive in any way. 
because when I made that other picture, I was accused of uh, trying to ridicule pedophy or trying to ridicule the whole LGBTQ movement or trying to like create this freak show character in order to shock people or something, but this is exactly the opposite of my intentions. What I'm trying to contribute is opening people's minds and opening their eyes to the existence and validity of trans people. And there is a specific reason why I chose him for this picture and it's going to be more clear once I uh, get to the end of this video, so please stick around if you want to hear that. Just a little break because I wanted to show you this. So we don't have many pictures of Leda and uh, this photo shoot is like the most famous one and all the textbooks in, uh, in middle school have these pictures. And uh, one interesting thing that I wanted to point out is that she might have one of the most interesting looking noses I've ever seen. <laughs> like there's this really big nose opening that is really long and it's extending forward much more than uh, most people's noses. And she has these really tiny nostrils in exchange. So it's like this uh, really pointy and thin and it's almost, almost looks like a beak. Honestly, I wasn't really able to show that in the picture, but I wanted to mention it because I found it interesting. Also about Adi, this guy has one of the strangest faces I've ever seen. Like maybe it's just me who was staring at this face for way too long, but does he have a round face or a square face? The answer is yes. Does he have a big nose or not? Yes. <laughs> does he have strong eyebrows or not? Yes, obviously. <laughs> So it was it was a bit of a mess, but I feel like that I managed to create a person on my artwork who resembles him at least a bit to a bit. And I showed the picture to some people and they recognized him as Odi Andres, so that was a success. So where was I other than showing you these uh, spoilers? So it's time to talk about the poems. The first one is titled with Leda at the Ball. And people nowadays would recognize this story as a kind of a Tim Burton style poem. So the whole story is about Adi and Leda entering the ballroom as this dark, freaky couple and, uh, and the happy and cheerful young people just got scared away by their presence. <laughs> it's kind of this uh, dark romantic story. You could always call it uh, like a gothic love poem or something, but one thing for sure back then, People were not taking it lightly at Hungary. Handsome lads and rosy lovers gathering, gazing in horror at the somber couple entering. Who are they? Inquiring, terrified, the dreadful. And so we enter hand in hand, mournful. Music dies amidst the merry ball. Sudden gusts of icy wind whirl through the frozen flames of the hall, amongst the youth that swiss to swirl. But the two of us dance, a dance of macabre, ghastly, and the startled youth at once fall apart fastly. The other poem is titled Hawk Mating at the Fallen Leaves. And uh, this poem is much more directly about the toxicity of their relationship. And it's about using this hawk couple as their metaphor who hurt and uh, possibly kill each other at the end of the poem. So another really cheerful story. Up, up, and onward into autumn fly in shrill pursuit and raucous hunting cry. Pair of hawks with summer weary wings. This is our final mating, and the keen talon on feather tears the quick between, and so we fall together with the leaves. I feel like how I use these poems in self-explanatory, the whole setting with the ballroom dance is obviously inspired by with Leda at the ball, and the hawks on the picture that actually look more like ravens, but it was uh, better to keep them dark, so the picture looked better this way. So the whole motif of the appearance of these uh, ravenous birds and the couple tearing into each other's hearts is inspired by the poem Hawk Mating on the Fallen Leaves. As we are nearing the end, I have to talk about the importance of Adi's poems and uh, about the fact why I think that uh, him being a classic in Hungarian literature is really ironic. So the situation is the following. Adi Andre died 103 years ago and a great part of his poetry was about pointing out the flaws of Hungary and uh, discussing how underdeveloped it was 
before uh, before anyone was uh, allowed or daring to write about this issue and he just uh, hit the nail on the head with this thing and he was raw and straightforward with his message and uh, you know you feel the hatred in his poems i intentionally chose uh, poems that were not about the hungary situation back then but if you read those poems you really feel that he has a sort of hate in him and uh, and a really different kind of love towards the whole west but at the same time you can just tell that he was someone who really cared about this and someone who really wanted to see progress in his own home and Adi himself became the history of Hungary, but this progress uh, didn't. So if we could bring him back for one day and he could look around, on one hand he would see how far the civilization went and he would feel uh, some sort of pride, but at the same time he would be really sad when he thinks about how much the country didn't change in this 100 years and how the current leadership is trying to drag down the whole society. He had one uh, really famous poem called uh, I am the son of Gog and Magog. I'm not sure if those uh, names are the same in uh, English. It's a poem partially inspired by this biblical story. And one thing that appears once again in this poem is that he's seeing himself as a sort of prophet. And uh, he feels that it's his duty to, to guide his own people towards a better future. That it's his uh, responsibility to bring progressivism into his country. Actually, thinking about themselves as prophets is a common thing about uh, poets or artists in general. And Adi was most uh, definitely seeing himself as one. There's even this story that he was born with six fingers on his hand. And the extra finger was removed when he was a baby. But he saw it as some sort of uh, divine sign that he was meant to be someone who shapes his own people someone who is destined to become this prophet that he saw himself as and uh, and in one way he he eventually became this prophet and he continues to inspire people to this day only not the majority of people sadly but when uh, people of my age look into his uh, thought process and his uh, works and then we s just see how much ahead of his time he was and uh, how much people like him are needed for the world and how much how much people of progress are hated in their own time and then they become these uh, these people who are known by everyone and who are quoted each day and who give inspiration to people each day and obviously i as every other artist aspire to be someone like him and as I said before, he was not a trans man and still I decided to depict him as a trans man. And uh, I, I have no idea how he would feel about it actually. Most likely wouldn't even say <laughs> anything to me. Just, yeah, some, some stupid fan. I feel like that if there is one person as known as him who would feel honored if he knew how someone is using his likeliness and his works in order to in order to represent progressive ideas like the acceptance of trans people 103 years after he passed then i feel like that this person would be Adi and that is the reason why i chose him to be the trans person of this collection. This is the series so far, I titled it uh, Queer Hungary Reimagined. I know it feels kind of cringe, but uh, but it's a clear title. And so far I have these two artworks in it. I still haven't talked about how I made an animation in Blender using the elements of this picture. Animating things is still new to me and I'm still uh, figuring out how things work. But I felt like that this uh, picture can uh, really benefit from this animation. And as I said, I have uh, more ideas for the future. I have, uh, I have planned to make one picture like every one or two months until our current anti-LGBTQ plus leadership is in power. And I know it's not much and I know that it's practically nothing. 
for me to make these but uh, th this is exactly how they want us to feel they want us to feel that we cannot change anything and they want us to feel that uh, creating such things as this painting is meaningless and uh, i want to contribute as little as i can to the to the goal that i want hungary to reach at one point this is the whole story behind this series and i'm really thankful if you are still here and if you watch through this video and you might be asking why i'm making these videos in english instead of hungarian if these pictures are about hungarian people it is very simple pretty much there is no one at hungary who would watch these videos <laughs> like hungarian is spoken by 13 million people worldwide and i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest most people who are uh, people of progress know english well enough to watch this video <laughs> that's that's not even not even bloating this uh bigger than it is that's that's literally how it is nowadays i want to address uh, the west with these videos and not the Hungarians who don't even speak English because uh, let's be honest most of them uh, would I don't know kill me for making these pictures <laughs> or at least knock uh, a few of my teeth out but if you are here then uh, thank you very much for contributing for my project and I cannot express how thankful I am so this is it thank you very much for watching have a nice day do some art even if it involves some ravenous bird action and have fun while doing that and farewell.